Welcome to the Iridex Cyclo G6 setup, initiation, and walkthrough. The Iridex Cyclo G6 laser platform is an 810 nanometer diode laser for the use in the treatment of glaucoma, as well as if you have a unit which is capable of indirect ophthalmoscopy delivery, you can also treat retinopathy of prematurity and some rare ocular tumors. The Cyclogy 6 consists of the laser box, the foot pedal, which initiates the treatment, and a number of delivery devices, which are capable of both continuous wave treatments and micropulse treatments. On the back of the Cyclogy 6, you have a power input for the included power cord. You also have three multi-use ports that the foot pedal can be plugged into. You may choose any one and it will work with all three of the multi-function port inputs. Once you have plugged the power cord into the unit and into the receptacle on the wall, and you have ensured that the foot plate is plugged into one of the multi-use ports on the back of the laser, it is time to turn the Cyclo G6 on. By rotating the key towards the right, you will initiate the self-check and startup process of the Cyclo G6. This may take 30 to 45 seconds. This system check ensures that the laser is operating at its optimal form. Once the laser completes the initiation process, you will see the startup screen. Going from left to right, we have an illumination port, which is only utilized with a illuminated G probe delivery device. And then we have a laser port, which is where the delivery device fiber will be plugged into to deliver the laser energy through. Each one of the corresponding knobs here for duration, so this is the time of the treatment that the physician desires. The large center knob is for the power, increasing to whatever the desired settings the physician requires. And then interval, which here will be in milliseconds for how long each treatment will be delivered. In micropulse mode, the interval will be unchangeable. As you can see here, the UP is lit up with a duty cycle of 31.3%. This is a constant that we set and is recommended for all micropulse procedures. You have an option button, a preset button, and then a counter button. So if we go into the options to begin with, you will see that we have five selections. The aiming beam standby, which can be set on and off, the aiming beam during treatment, which can be spent on and off, and we can actually, by pushing this bar here, change the intensity of the aiming, aiming beam, which I'll demonstrate in a few moments. We have a voice prompt as the laser is ticking down on the duration every 10 seconds with the voice prompt, a female or male, and you can change that setting for whichever you desire, will call out every 10 seconds. So if we start at 80 seconds per treatment, when we get to 70 seconds, it will call out 70 seconds. When it gets to 60, it will go 60. So every 10 seconds. In between then, we have a timer audio, which will tick like a metritone on and off to let the surgeon know every one second so that he can adjust his cadence and how he's sweeping across the eye based on that metritone. So we can turn on that for male, off, ticks, or female. And then we also have an auxiliary for timing, uh, which is now set for on. Again, the sound can be adjusted up and down 
depending on how loud it is in the OR, and the illumination can be set up and down. You can also set the illumination for both the screen to be brighter and for the backlighting of all of the knobs. The last button here, the orange button, is your initiation button to go live with laser treatment. So when we treat, it will, when a probe is plugged in, it will basically blink green and then go solid green when you are initiated and when he steps or she steps on the foot plate, the laser will be live and you will be delivering energy. There's also a small red button with the stop signal on it. This is if there's any problem at any time, pushing this will automatically shut down the laser system. And you can see we've had an inert, inert emergency stop pressed. Turn off and then back on. So here we can readjust the system and bring it back online. And this is in case of any emergency that could happen during a treatment in the OR. The last button on the screen is your preset button, which is right here. This allows uh, the Iridex representatives when they set up the laser to put preset settings of power and duration for different types of treatments for different doctors who may be utilizing the laser. By pushing the preset button, you can come in and there's one set here for Micropulse TLT. Um, we can set one up and walk you through it in the case that you need to change one or add a surgeon. You can press one of the available presets here, push view. You can see that this is in Micropulse right now. It, you could also do continuous wave. It all depends on what you want to preset. We'll go ahead with a continuous wave setting here. So 50 seconds is your duration. Again, here you can adjust that. The timer right here and then your power 2500 and as I said there will be no interval because it is in micropulse mode and micropulse basically cycles the laser on and off short durations continuously during, during the treatment so that the laser is on for 0.5 milliseconds and then off for 1.1 milliseconds which is a 31.3 percent duty cycle once you're happy with your settings you can now name the preset by pushing the preset. There's a small red scissors. This will delete whatever has been written there to start with. And we can put Dr. Smith and okay. And then save. And now we select that Go back to the preset, you can see that Dr. Smith is now listed in the preset designation. One of the other things that you must maintain is the use of safety goggles when delivering any laser applications uh, for any treatment. So we have included 810 nanometer blocking goggles. This is required for every personnel member in the OR as part of OSHA regulations. The other requirement is you will need to have a sign up on the outside of the OR door stating a laser is in use, eye protection must be worn at all times, please do not enter. Those are the requirements that your laser safety operator will always look to for training and to make sure that we have safety maintained during any retinal glaucoma or eye laser procedures in the OR. Once we're happy with the settings, we, so we can pick this, Micropulse TLT, we can push select, and the measurements are ready to go. Now, I'll demonstrate how to put a delivery device into the port and what that will look like once you do it. I'm going to use a continuous wave fiber. The small hub on the back of the delivery device uh, we'll have a rubber flange that covers the male end so that the optics are protected. You'll need to take that off, open the laser port, and then insert the male end into the female, and then lightly twist until you can't twist anymore. And you can see now that there's an orange hue around the delivery device telling you that you've engaged in the port 
and you have it seated properly. If this doesn't light up, it means that there is an error or you don't have it seated completely. And that's why it's important to make sure that you screw it all the way down. On the screen, you can see that we've come up in a continuous wave mode. So MicroPulse is off. It's telling me the duration is for two seconds or 2000 milliseconds and the power is not set yet. So I'll push, okay. So MicroPulse off is what it said. Um, but now it's gonna verify that you all have your 810 nanometer eye safety filter goggles in place and you're ready to go. Once that's complete, press okay. Now you're ready to treat. So again, we'll leave a, a standard continuous wave treatment with our G probe delivery device, 2000 milliwatts. So we'll put that in for a duration of two seconds and the interval, there isn't one. So this is gonna deliver a continuous wave of 2000 milliwatts for two seconds. Now, once everything's set and the physician is ready to initialize treatment, you will engage the orange illuminated button on the upper left. It will blink and once it goes solid, the laser is now ready and the energy will be delivered through the delivery device once the physician steps on the pedal. If the physician lets go in the middle of the treatment of the pedal, everything will stop and it will continue right from the point that it was disengaged. So I'm gonna step on the pedal and you'll be able to hear the metrotome and the laser signal. So that's two seconds, 2000 milliwatts. For a continuous wave treatment, they'll do somewhere between 18 and 21 spots. They're discrete single spots in about three quadrants of the eye to get a complete continuous wave treatment. In effect, they're doing a micropulse treatment. They actually will be sweeping back and forth across about 150 degrees of arc, sparing the three and nine meridians both superiorly in the eye and inferiorly in the eye. So that treatment could look like 50 seconds superior, 50 seconds inferiorly, and there you will hear that metrotome of the, uh, the clock ticking. One tick equals one second, and then the voice will call out every 10 seconds as the treatment is expiring. When you're done with the treatment, disengage the laser. Now there'll be no energy being delivered through the fiber, and you can disengage the fiber from the laser. And basically these are single disposable use labeled from the FDA. They come in a sterile double pack package, uh, and then you can throw them away after the procedure is done. They're good for a bilateral procedure on a single patient or a unilateral procedure on a single patient. They're not for multiple use. There's no cleaning or no uh, sterilization that can be done to these once you've opened the package and engaged with the patient. Now, if we look at MicroPulse, we can go back to the preset, push MicroPulse TLT. MicroPulse on. Select, now the MicroPulse setting is on. And the difference here is you'll see that you have 50 seconds for the duration, 2000 milliwatts, and then the duty cycle will be lit up at that 31.3%, which again means that it's gonna cycle on for 0.5 seconds and then off for 1.1 seconds throughout the entire procedure. Basically heating the tissue up and then letting it relax through a thermal relaxation period of that 1.1 milliseconds and then back on again. So that's the difference between MicroPulse and Continuous Wave. MicroPulse does not introduce terminal necrosis and tissue damage like continuous wave does. So it's, it's a little bit more tissue sparing and you can get almost the same desired effect without doing as much damage in the same laser platform. Again, same way that it's hooked up, um, placing the delivery device within the port, screwing it down. Once it's engaged, the port will light up and then you can push the engage button once the surgeon is ready and we'll be ready to go. You cannot do a micropulse procedure with a continuous wave probe, nor can you do a continuous wave procedure with a micropulse probe. In the hub of the delivery device, 
there is a small RFID chip which basically designates which procedure is going to be performed by which delivery device. This is a safety factor so that you don't get in trouble by accidentally putting it in one mode or another when they're trying to do a different mode. So as I said, you can only do MicroPulse in MicroPulse approved probes and you can only do continuous wave with continuous wave delivery device probes. Now the only difference between almost all of the probes is when we get to the G-Probe illuminated probe. And that's where the second port comes into play. The only difference is you will now have two hubs that you will be looking at. One for the laser energy and one for illumination. So plug the illumination probe in. It just slides right in and engages and then you plug the laser delivery system probe in or hub in and you're ready to go and you can see we automatically have come up with a continuous wave setting we can just push Micro okay off. micro pulse is off again it's still going to verify do you have your safety goggles on do that let's put i'm not going to be able to dial a power and this is actually a safety probe so it will not let me uh, apply power but you can see that now the difference is you have illumination built right into the probe. There are two small light pipes that help to illuminate where the ciliary body is present under the sclera so that the surgeon can see that and they can accurately place the discrete spots right over the ciliary body. And this illumination is controllable. So again, we have an aiming beam illumination and then here is the illumination that we can change and turn up and down for the illumination to transilluminate the uh, ciliary body. And that's the only difference between um, the G-probe illuminate and the G-probe is just having this light port as opposed to no. So we can again engage the laser. Once the laser is engaged, depress the foot switch. You'll hear the four second duration and then it will be done. Now, you can also see that the counter has gone from one spot to two. So this way the surgeon can accurately understand how many spots he's delivering while doing continuous wave treatments. It doesn't really apply to micropulse because you're sweeping back and forth as opposed to placing discrete spots. So we don't really use it there, but here, if I apply another spot, we're gonna get three. Another spot, we're going to get four. And so as you go through the treatment, they may ask you how many spots did I deliver. This can then be charted in the op notes so that we understand what was done, at what duration, and at what power setting. And for MicroPulse, it's going to be the duration, the power setting, and then how many sweeps they made. Be it our standard protocol is typically for five sweeps, 10 seconds per sweep at 50 seconds. At the end of the day, for cleaning and disinfecting the Cyclo G6 and the foot pedal, we recommend using 70% isopropyl alcohol. Close the ports to the laser application. Turn the laser off. And we advise you to disconnect the power output to the wall. You can then safely wipe down the laser and disinfect it and then be ready for your next patient or for the next day's use of the Cyclo G6 glaucoma laser platform. In the pre-op area prior to the procedure, there are really no required medications that need to be given. If the eye is very red uh, and tortuous, especially in the conjunctival area, you may use a vasoconstrictive drop like a phenylephrine or a Lumify, which will blanch those blood vessels and ensure that a subconjunctival hemorrhage won't occur during the procedure and that that energy won't be absorbed by the blood, which is also a chromophore for this wavelength. So you'll get more energy towards a target tissue. Anesthesia-wise, typically we see retrobulbar anesthesia, peribulbar anesthesia, uh, mild sedation, combination of a block and mild sedation, and subtenons injections of lidocaine. 
One caveat with subtenons is you have to be very careful because you don't want to introduce again a subconjunctival hemorrhage which could absorb a lot of energy and increase the rate of complications plus left, leave the treatment less efficacious. So typically with subtenons, you want to make sure that the eyes are nice and white and quiet and that the injections occur not around the limbal region. During the procedure, obviously we will use topical anesthesia to make sure that the patient is comfortable. And we do require a liquid coupling agent, which is of a viscous nature, uh, being methyl cellulose, goniosol or gonioscopy fluid, uh, and or lidocaine gel are all acceptable uh, coupling agents to be used with the delivery device. If you don't use the coupling agent, you can actually lose up to 40% of the energy that's being delivered by the laser through scatter and reflection because you don't maintain good coupling with the tissue. Postoperatively, typically it's a steroid drop uh, that is given uh, after the patient removes the patch if they're blocked. If not, they can stop start them when they get home. Uh, occasionally, we do see uh, a depot of subconjunctival steroid injections, something like dexamethasone, 0.4 cc's or so, uh, and or a combination of both the depot and drops postoperatively. Typically, pain medication is not required, uh, nor is the use of cycloplegia uh, for the patient following the procedure. What you'll need to do the procedure in the OR is uh, some sterile Q-tips, a conjunctival forcep, a muscle hook and or scleral depressor for eye manipulation, and your viscous liquid coupling agent, so lidocaine gel, methyl cellulose, or uh, goniosol. You'll also need the appropriate delivery device for the treatment the surgeon desires to uh, deliver. A bottle of tetracaine and or preparacaine in the OR for anesthesia will also be required.